Yo, what's going on, Knox F fam? Welcome to the very first official video that I'm announcing as Knox F Barbecue. My name is still Joe Yim, AKA Mighty Joe Yim, but this is officially Knox F Barbecue. And for the very first video, I wanted to give you guys a better look at the new smoker. All right, guys, let me introduce you to the new Heisenberg 2.0. This is a primitive 250 gallon on a wagon with a collapsible stack with a semi-insulated firebox uh, just because we want to make sure these tires don't melt. But it's not fully insulated, so I'll still be able to build fires like I used to. We got two doors, and because it's a 250, it's still fairly light, so yen yeah, still no counterweights. But because this is a lot lower to ground and a lot less, a lot less metal, I'm not having to hoist it up with two hands and almost having to kill myself every single time. As you see here, we do have top racks on this smoker so we can maximize the amount of space. And some people might be asking, why did I get this on a wagon instead of a trailer? One, I don't have a space for a trailer. Uh, and two, um, I just like the fact that we were able to fit this in this backyard um, and it just fits. And it just, it's kind of like, the perfect fit for what we are trying to do in the backyard um, and also yeah, as you guys saw with the stack like it just fits perfectly i don't plan on moving this a bunch but if we want to move it it's actually so much easier for me to move this 250 than it was to move um, my yoder smoker in my backyard because the wheels are just so much better and if i want to move this around a little bit in the backyard i can do it by myself and if you have one other person to help you out it's just it, it's it's super easy, guys. I was a little bit worried because I thought it was gonna be too big to maneuver, but uh, yeah, it just really works. Before we can start actually cooking on this thing, we gotta make sure we get a good burn on the inside. So uh, I got a couple spray cans of just some canola oil. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the top and the bottom racks. We're gonna get a spray on the doors and all on the inside. And as you guys noticed, we did not put the thermometers in there yet. And then we'll get a nice, really, really hot fire in this smoker um, just to get a good coating on it. All right, the next thing that we gotta do is get this fire really, really hot in this smoker. I also wanna make sure we initiate this smoker the proper way. And people in the comments will often ask, why do I use fire starters and Korean newspaper? We use the fire starters to get the fire nice and hot. And then we use the Korean newspaper for flavor. Because if you don't use Korean newspaper when you're starting your fire, your food isn't gonna taste very good. amount of coals that is going to this 250 looks comical because I'm used to the firebox being so much smaller but hey it's not a bad problem to have and to ensure that this fire always has extra good flavor we're going to add a little extra Korean newspaper in here All right, so as you can see here, we just got about five splits in here. Uh, we got two on the bottom, uh, right over on top of the coals and three up top. Uh, we might throw, yeah, let's do it. Let's throw one or two more on. We got these two really old pieces that I've been waiting to use, so. Ow, splinter. Feels like the perfect time to use it. Uh, and right now we're not getting as much smoke kind of coming out like it was before. Um, so what we'll do is we'll uh, close this door down just a little bit and if it starts kind of kicking back again then we'll open it up and maybe push the uh, pile back a little bit further but right now I just kind of want to leave it where it is and see how it goes so yeah I'll leave it right there 
And I'll say the other thing that I like about the firebox door is it doesn't have like the baffles and stuff on there. I personally just like it without anything. That way I can just kind of control the fire with just opening and closing this. And you know, if it needs more oxygen, you just open it wide. But generally, I like to make sure that, you know, I can kind of maintain a fire with a little bit cracked, a little bit open here, or, you know, halfway or all the way during certain cases. But yeah, I don't like too many variables of having this be here and then this baffle being slightly open and all that kind of stuff. It just makes it a little bit easier and um, yeah, eliminates extra factors that uh, you might not need to think about. I think other smokers might need it uh, because it needs extra oxygen to kind of pull through. Um, but I, this is why I like the primitive pits. It's really nice and simple. All right, so this fire has been going for about like, I'll say 15 minutes or so and flames are making their way up to the top. So just gonna push them back a little bit further. So you can see right there, after I kind of moved around and I poked around the fire a little bit, like the flames and the direction of flames are starting to change. And that's really because there's certain parts of the logs that weren't really being exposed because they're making direct contact with another log, but they were still kind of drying out in those spots. So as you kind of start to move it a little bit, different parts of the log will start to catch and then it'll start to kind of like help ignite different parts of the fire. And if your fire's like dying and stuff, you don't have to like topple everything over and mix all around again. You still want to have the parts of the logs that were still like igniting it on fire to still stay on fire while exposing other parts of the logs to start to catch too. When you're doing things, make small, small adjustments unless you really, really need to kind of take everything out to rearrange it. But I would say usually in those situations it has more to do with the fact that you're just kind of choking off all the oxygen because there's not enough airflow at the bottom. All the logs are too close to each other and it's kind of choking everything out. You'll be able to see that because that's when you're really getting that dirty smoke and it's really billowing and like the temperature is just really not going up at all. Now that everything is caught a little bit more, we're gonna push everything further to exchange just so we can get a little more heat in that, um, in that cooking chamber. All right, that's it. So the logs are kind of closer to the center of the firebox and uh, we'll close it up and just let it keep going for a little bit longer. So while I was making this video, I was playing around some settings on my camera and then I accidentally switched my camera to slow-mo because I'm a fool. So there's a chunk of this recording that I just left on slow-mo, I had no idea. If you make videos, don't make that same mistake that I did. If you take a look at these grates, you can see how the color has changed and it's really taking on that coat of seasoning, especially on those tops of the doors. You can kind of see the difference between what it used to look like and what it looks like now, but it'll still probably take me, you know, five, six, seven more cooks to really, really get the seasoning down and start to understand how the smoker is really going to cook in the long term. And at this point, this is also when I decided to put on the thermometers on the smoker now that it's not super hot and I'm not worried about the ones that are in the front being burnt out. And I feel like lately a lot of people have been cooking on some new pits. You know, we've seen the biscuit test, uh, Brad did the bacon test, but I'm poor. So I decided to grab two loaves of white bread and uh, we threw white bread all over the smoker, you know, just so we can see what the browning the bread looks like. Whether or not this is a reliable method, I don't know, but I decided to try it out because I thought it'd be fun. All right, guys, so I'm not even 100% sure what I captured, but after we did everything, this is what it looks like. So up in front right now. I'm pretty sure this is to be expected. Like you see these right here, they look like rye chips, um, like you see in Chex Mix. And kind of like this, this entire front row right here is kind of, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really expect anything to really be cooked in front of there. You go to this next row, I mean, I didn't really give this one a shot. I just put these butt ends right here. And I was, uh, I was asking earlier if people uh, actually eat these butt ends because I actually like them. And as we move on, we can see that all these pieces are pretty, you can hear it, it's pretty, uh, It's they're all like croutons pretty much. But uh, if I were to look back here, the bottom actually, all of them look really, really nice and even. I'm looking at this top rack. All of them are pretty even, except for this one in the back right here it has a little bit more of a golden color on it. Um, but if I were to flip all of them over, yeah, I mean, let's say 
this is kind of like the hot spot of this top rack on this one but i still say you could still pretty much cook on here so again just from looking at all of this you know right here up to this point right here is probably where i'd be like all right we probably can't put anything here when brad and i were doing the rib cook in kansas city we still were able to get one or two racks um right here but we couldn't really get anything for the past here this row right here if you're looking at these two right here i mean they both look pretty dark but there's a significant difference between this one and this one so i would still say up to this point here you can still cook on i would still feel very comfortable this right here and this right here are pretty similar colors and you know like i said I, we were able to cook ribs that were up here, so I'm pretty sure we will be able to cook stuff over here too. So if you're doing things like chicken, you're doing things like turkey breast, butts, anything like that, you know, I would say everything's fair game. The only thing that might be a little bit questionable, uh, if you do cook really, really hot, I would say is brisket. But if you're able to bring that temperature low and you're able to maintain it pretty evenly throughout, you know, up to this point, I think you should be pretty good. From this point to all the way here is that sweet spot on that smoker where you can kind of guarantee everything from here to here is gonna cook pretty dang even. And honestly, even here, you might get a little more color on your food, but it's not gonna, I, I personally don't think it's gonna mess up your cook in any significant way just because on a top rack. Generally, the only reason why I haven't cooked on top racks before is because I personally don't like the food dripping on the stuff on the bottom rack. But if you guys have seen my other videos or the videos that we did uh, in Kansas City when we we're cooking those ribs, those ribs that we're cooking on the top rack were the ones that cook the fastest. And in my personal opinion, they look the best. You know, we used to take the ones that were on the bottom and move up to the top just so we can cook them a little bit faster. Overall, you know, the way that this thing cooks is what I would expect really excited to cook on this thing also this is not a paid thing you know primitive did not send me this for free i did buy this and it's something that i've been wanting to get for a very very long time i just want you guys to know i'm not affiliated with this company at all i just really really like their smokers i guess as i finish off this video as i show you guys this new pit heisenberg like i said like show breaking bad has been for whatever reason a huge influence in my life or something that i really enjoyed you know both heisenberg and i only have one question for you Wanna cook? All right, guys, even though I did move to a 250 gallon pit, if you do wanna see a fire management video with a 1,000 gallon pit and a backyard pit, you can click these two videos right here for more information.